So we're in the middle of an incredible moment right now with President Biden demonstrating such integrity by passing the baton to Kamala Harris, who is now the presumptive Democratic nominee. It's such an amazing moment. And I'm going to be super brief because selfishly, we have some of the most brilliant leaders in our movement on this call, and I'm dying to hear from them. And we're going to have a bell ring after seven minutes with a one minute warning to keep us all on time so we get through the major substance in the first hour. And I'll just say a word about what can you do? What can we do? That's what we're asking ourselves. And this time, it's time to look at your assets, talk to your financial advisor, make the biggest investment you can make in our country, in our future, and the organizers who are going to take us forward. And if you've already done that, good job. Thank you, Gold Stars, for moving early. And if you have more to move, now is the time to do it. it we're not letting the dust settle. Do not wait until August or September to get inspired. Groups need to know how much money they have to work with right now. And the groups you're gonna hear from this call all have huge budget gaps and they need to know this week, are they hiring staff? Are they laying staff off? They need to know now, move the money now. If you want to move money with MVP or through MVP, we are here. If you want to give directly to our partners, to Black Voters Matter, to Lucha, to Way to Win, to Working Families Party, to Win the Midwest, or BFD, or any of our partners, you can give through any vehicle. We are all one big team over here. It's all of our job to make sure the entire field gets funded. And we need everyone, everyone on this call, everyone to be an ambassador, to be an organizer in every way you can. This, our, our entire lives have prepared us for this moment. Organize your family, your friends, your house parties, everyone on your phone, everyone on your Facebook. Come on, let's go. We have over 100 house parties and Zoom parties this year already. We're going for 200. Today is a 90-minute call, and the last half hour is group office hours to talk about what we can do and brainstorm. And with that, we're going to get into it, and I'm going to introduce our first guest, Latifa Simon. And this is very meaningful to have you here, Latifa. I first saw Latifa speak at a conference in the 90s in Berkeley about the prison industrial complex, and she absolutely electrified the room. We were all like, who is she? And now she's running for Congress to replace Barbara Lee. Talk about generational transition. Go on her website, read her bio. She's the youngest woman to receive a MacArthur Genius Award. She's also a funder. She's actually one of MVP's funders. Thank you, Latifa. But what we wanted to ask her to talk about today is how she met a young district attorney named Kamala Harris and the Kamala Harris that you know. Um, so Latifa, are you there with us? I am. I am. Uh -oh. uh, and wonderful, we, I, I hear you. So can you describe what you were doing at the time and as a young organizer and how you came to know then DA Kamala Harris. Will you tell us the story? I, I got you. And it's so good to see your enthusiasm actually matches mine. I'm in a car, you know, like many of us working three jobs. I'm a candidate, um, also, you know, a funder and a lifelong organizer. And now I feel like I got to work 10 more hours a day to get this sister elected along with all of you all. You know, I'll be quick. You know, I met Kamala Harris 23 years ago. I was a young executive director at an organization many of you all know called the Young Women's Freedom Center. There's no institution like it in the world, which is what I call a Highlander Center for young women and gender expansive young people who've been in the criminal justice system, who've been forgotten in most parts by movement, by the city and county and federal institutions that are supposed to support them. So we started an institution that would organize our, our own to fight against the war on drugs. And uh, as a young ED, you know, working to stop the pattern and practice of our police and then our local DA arresting and charging young women who were in the sex trade, uh, we got pretty known for that work because we were doing the job that probation couldn't do, that a local juvenile hall couldn't do by bringing young women in the system and activating them and keeping them outside of the underground street economy. A young city attorney, not district attorney. She was a prosecutor in Alameda County, but Kamala Harris was hired by then city attorney, uh, uh, the first elected woman city attorney in San Francisco, Louise Rennie, to launch a task force um, to stop the, this pattern and practice of police arresting children who were being bought and sold on the streets. She called me up and asked me, would I help her build this task force? 
And again, I didn't work with district attorneys. I was on the ground. We were fighting against our local district attorney at the time, Terrence Hallinan, for direct filing young people. Long story, brother, we launched this task force together within six months. This young deputy city attorney changed the pattern and practice of how police treated young people on the streets in San Francisco. This is prior to her win for district attorney. When she decided to run, I was at some you know, some 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 thoughts about whether I should support anyone who wanted to be an elected district attorney in San Francisco. But I quickly joined as a volunteer on her campaign, still leading the Young Women's Freedom Center, because it's not that complicated if you've actually worked in the system. There are very few folks very few folks who are proximate to victims of violent crime. There are very few folks who are proximate to young women and people, young people who are living and working on the streets. And Kamala had been a prosecutor, um, prosecuting rapists and prosecuting kidnappers and sex traders in Alameda County. And that experience to me um, really complicated my ideas of what criminal justice reform should like, knowing and understanding there were folks who are crossing social contracts on the young people that I loved, and they were never held accountable. The prison system as we know it is defunct, it is awful, it doesn't work. And on both sides of the table, you know, Kamala talked to me a long time when she began her race that we needed folks who understood what was happening um, on both sides. I came to work for Kamala about two years after she was elected um, because she convinced me that while I had a bullhorn in my backpack and in Pumas, you know, consistently on my feet and I was organizing on the ground in prisons and in jails, she pushed me and saying, you know, Latifa, you and your organization and your movement, you can continue to stand outside with your bullhorn begging leaders to do what you need them to do in terms of shifting this system or you can challenge yourself individually and come behind the dais, come behind the doors and create opportunities for young people that you care about. I did just that. I came on to work for Kamala Harris as her chief of reentry services. I was there for five years. We created really to me to this day, one of the best reentry and diversion programs, not just inside a district attorney's office, but also on the ground. Kamala used her Rolodex to essentially create a court program with Felton Henderson pres presiding for young men and women who were arrested and charged with crack cocaine. She was clear as I was that these young people didn't need to be in prisons and in jails, and that if we could address some of the basic and profound consequential issues in their lives, we wouldn't have to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars a year imprisoning them in California's ridiculously large uh, prison system. Uh, I, I could say so much about Kamala, but in those five years that I worked for her, um, I, why I will ride for her and always have is because I understand the human being that she is, how hard she works, she comes early, she leaves late, but profoundly she's been um, just a very close mentor in my life. In fact, you know, she introduced me to my husband, she married us, and she eulogized him at his funeral. I mean, so many folks who have worked for Kamala could tell you the same thing. The woman means business, but she's also as full of accountability. She has always been about equal, being equal around creating opportunity for, for folks in community. Listen, no politician is perfect. There's nobody more qualified to lead this country than Kamala Divi Harris. Mm. Latifa, thank you so much. And so how are you feeling in this moment like, what is, how are you experiencing this moment um, right now? Well, so you have to understand, running for president of the United States, it's, as you know, that's not going to be an easy task for anybody, um, but a Black and South Asian woman who grew up in, you know, literally segregated Berkeley, people laugh at that now, but you didn't live here in the 60s. Um, she's fought for everything that she's gotten. She went to a public law school. Um, this woman chose to go in to the district attorney's office in Alameda County because she had a very close friend who was sexually assaulted and no one fought for that best friend. Uh, I get Kamala. We are gonna have to dispel so many myths. We're gonna have to clarify her record. We're also going to have to move the president to be <laughs> uh, on many of the politics that we wanna see her hold center. That's, I feel like our job. The first thing that we have to do you know, we have to spread uh, the gospel about the possibility of having this woman run and win an election where fascism is right in our face. Two, we have to raise a lot of money. This 
race is going to cost more than we can even conceive. Uh, the racists and the, the, the homophobes, they're coming out of the woodworks, um, but they're scared. But really, to answer your question, how I feel, I feel like um, we're going to win the presidency. We are. Movement is going to win the presidency. Listen, to the folks who are nervous about how to articulate this moment, to folks who are on the fence, I know and you know that we can organize in a Harris White House. We will not be let into the gate in a Trump administration. The Supreme Court has made that man king and we have not even contemplated the evil that he can do. The choice is so clear. And we have a formidable, wonderful, spirited, joyful warrior running for president. And I'm all in. Let's go. Yes. We look forward to, to supporting a trifecta with you in Congress and Kamala in the White House. And that is a perfect pivot. Thank you so much, Latifa. To, uh, so to, much. Jen, to Jen and Kona, Fernand, Jen Fernandez and Kona, our dear partner with Way to Win, who I met at a conference 20 years ago, who's a brilliant visionary. She's a co-founder of Way to Win, one of MVP's closest national funding partners. If you don't know them, look them up. They consistently come up with brilliant ideas and Jen has been obsessed for a long time with the idea of supporting Kamala Harris. Jen, welcome. Tell us about it. Should have tried to get off of the slide. Thank you so much, Billy, and everyone on this call. I'm so energized by this turnout. It's incredible. And my sister Latifa, my, my Bay Area sister, thank you so much. It was such a beautiful testimonial. So as Billy said, uh, and we can pull up, uh, go to the next slide, from the first moment of the debate fallout, Way to Win got into gear because we had already set up something called the Black Swan Fund, knowing that this cycle would be unpredictable. And we had already been funding Kamala research since Biden's age concerns were coming to a head around February of this year. And one of the things we learned right away is that even though VP Harris has 100% name ID, she was not defined at all in the minds of voters. We were hearing from Gen Z, especially, we, did, we just don't know anything about her. So we knew for those who were advocating for Biden to stay in, we had to start pushing the surround sound campaign that Kamala was politically strong and could absolutely take this torch if passed. We saw too many white male donors and white male pundits and other kinds of pundits just dismissing her as even an option. So we commissioned a new poll right away and did an earned media blitz. You can see on the screen all just some of the headlines that we were able to achieve and that this research was used by donors, members of Congress and other operatives to push that we could have an alternative to Biden that wasn't just chaos. So it was an if you build it, they will come moment. Uh, you can go to the next slide. Our polling, which went viral online, showed that VP Harris was politically strong overall, and particularly with those very groups we, need, we knew we needed to shore up in the battleground states. And it also showed her most powerful message was one about protecting freedoms and painting this election as a choice between two very different futures, which brings me to our Amplify program, which is this huge collaboration between, you can go to the next slide, um, between Way to Win, ASO Communications, Gutsy Media, and we make the future action and with support from MVP as well. And we built these channels over the last year, actually, to deliver strong winning messages with this overarching frame of our freedoms, our families, our futures to the very voters we need to win. And through a large content creator ecosystem we've been building and partnerships with grassroots groups on the ground using the message guidance and customized ads and content. This whole thing is always on and ready to pivot when needed, which is what we did once Biden announced on Sunday. We released a new messaging brief for creators and groups that was distributed to an audience of well over 40 million people. And over the last couple of days, as we have seen VP Harris absolutely rock it with an amazing stump speech. The stump speech is literally echoing these messaging frames beautifully, talking about our freedoms being on the line, talking about the election as a choice between two different futures. So you go to the next slide, you can just see how we're able to push. Um, you can skip that video. It's just her being amazing. Um, but we will hopefully be seeing a lot more of that. We've been pushing even before VP Harris became the nominee was this contrast, right? We have to get people to understand what MAGA will do. 
So we have been uplifting the Project 2025 agenda from the very beginning. On the right, you'll see uh, Taraji P. Henson's now famous call to action that she made at the BET Awards. This didn't happen by accident. It was actually one of our Amplify partners, P68, an American Experiment Project, that had been working with her, feeding her the research and the messaging about Project 2025. And then since then, we've activated our whole creator network. One of our partners, Mutuals, went to the RNC and made some adorable content that's been going viral on TikTok, educating voters about Project 2025. And then at the same time, we had been doing with ASO and Frameshift new research to, to figure out well, how do we reach people who are tuning out, the really the voters that we really need to, to come out and to win in 2024. And that resulted in this blockbuster testing ad that you see on the left, which we're just releasing this week for grassroots partners in the Amplify network to share and customize in their own channels. So go to the next slide. And I just want to bring us back a little bit to less than a week ago, just to remember what the vibes were like and that this was the context we were living in. So if you could play that video on the left with Alana Glazer, uh, who's one of our partners in Amplify as well. I think we're not getting the sound. If there's any way to get the sound. If oh, not... yeah, Jen. So sorry. We weren't able to figure out the sound on this emergency okay. briefing. <laughs> I am no trying to get Gen Z there and millennials go. hyped to vote for Joseph R. Biden since 2020, and it wasn't easy. Now, it feels nearly impossible. But we're staring down the barrel of three months until November is unsexy to say the least. The choice between tales of the crypt and a literal shit stain. While the top of the ticket ranges from uninspiring to actually terrifying, in November we'll be voting for an entire administration, and Trump's side up and down the ballot is unabashedly trying to take away your basic human rights. There is a progressive movement building within the Democratic Party at the local, state, and federal level. This movement does look like the majority of voters. This series is making a case to rehire DePrez so we can keep progressive people in power and build to get the candidate in 2028 and beyond who we actually want to vote for. Okay, so that was on Thursday before the announcement on Sunday. And I think it's just a good reminder of how ever since then, the internet is just ablaze with positive energy toward VP Harris and the presidential campaign. And that young audiences have made this a huge cultural moment that has created the permission structure for non-political audiences to tap in the, into the election, join the trends, uplift Kamala, and create a cultural movement around her from fan cams to brat to coconut trees. So so if you go to the next slide and just play that middle video, if you if we can. Alana Glazer here, and I am okay. ambitious. <laughs> oh, if it's not working, okay, whatever. Well, you've you've seen some of these memes, um, and it really shows um, the vibe shift. And the coconut tree meme is a perfect example of how internet creators took what was originally shared as a right wing attack against VP Harris and turned it into a love filled anthem. And this is just so important for those who are just figuring out what brat means um, that we have to understand that the internet moves extremely fast. That meme is already going on the downslope, but there's new ones coming around the corner and that we've been handed a gift by President Biden to allow for a new energizing candidate to step into the race. We're in this moment now and we can harness it through the infrastructure that we've already laid down. So go to the next slide. Let's turn up the volume. Um, this is a high impact investment right now. So we're creating ads that are going viral, like the condom ad you see on your right, um, that's having more views than you can get on TV right now with the, with the audiences that we need to share. And all of this was before the vibe shift. So imagine what we can do if we saturate the airwaves, turn up the volume tenfold, and just make the Kamala candidacy, the winning candidacy, and deliver the federal trifecta. So finally, before we hear from our sister Latasha, Way to Win's plan to win was always focused on winning the Sun Belt in the southern states like Arizona, Nevada, Georgia, and North Carolina. This work is even more critical now. And through our partnership with BFD, which we have been building with MVP, Democracy Alliance, and others, we have a, a $2.5 million match for political dollars from labor partners on the table to put toward key interventions being led by groups in these states right now. So with that, I'll hand it back to you, Billy, and thank you all so much. Oh my God, aren't they brilliant? Oh my God, Jen, way to win. All the things. Okay, next we have Latasha, who needs no introduction. Latasha Brown, who co-leads our beloved partner, 
Black Voters Matter, which is one of the most important organizations in the country right now. I know we're all dying to hear what you're thinking about this moment and what does this mean for your constituency and your work? Well, the first thing I did right was the day I started to fight. Keep your eyes on the prize and hold on, hold on. I wanted to bring that energy in this space, you all, because we're fighting so much and organizing some, so much that sometimes we've got to just stand in the space of when we fight together, what it opens up for us, the possibilities that it opens up for us. And I just want to say thank you. I know you don't, um, I didn't, you didn't want me to do this, Billy, but I, I've got to say thank you for to MVP. Right, it is because of you. You are our first big donation as an organization, and you have continued the path. You know, I, Billy, and I had different strategies. The same destination, but we had different strategies on how we would get here. And the beautiful thing is, I do believe because our collective work and our, our collective uh, paradigm around what what it is that we want and our intentions, it got us here. So yay, we're here, y'all! I'm so excited. You know, I also want to let lift up that this is a special moment. Um, that people are excited about Kamala Harris, but I also want to caution us to understand that people are excited. Like, you know, part of what, when we are doing the work, I've been, I had said, this is bigger than Biden. Even this moment, y'all, is bigger than Kamala. That Kamala, yes, is certainly the candidate that we're rallying around, but people are excited because one, I think that there's a space, there's a pathway to hope, a pathway to victory that people feel and they've seen the sense of it. The other thing is that people are tired of traditional politics. I have a whole belief around the same thing not the exact same thing, but there's some elements of what put Obama in office are the same thing that put Trump in office, that people are tired of traditional politics. They want to see something different because they want to see themselves. And then what we know is that Kamala literally represents as a woman who are, women are the majority of this country, that finally we can have a, a candidate at the top of the ticket that we can actually see ourselves. And Hillary Clinton opened up the space. You know, at the end of the day, people saw her losing. She didn't lose right she cracked that glass ceiling and it's opened up a space and more light for us to see and even opened up the pathway for us to see now as Kamala run running so you know I think it's really important for us to realize that people want to see a new future they're they literally want something different because they want a better future they want to see something different and so in this moment what does that mean with this moment I've not seen and I'm, I, you know I've been doing political work my entire adult life I've not seen this level of energy since Obama, right? I've not in 2008. And in some ways, I'm seeing more energy now than I did then. And it might be because of the truncated time. I'm not sure. Um, but because there were people that were excited that Obama was on the ticket, but it wasn't until after Iowa that many Black voters and in, in, in where I'm from um, actually believed that he could win. And then it went to another level. I am seeing now because the possibilities of all the people before us, right, um, even the Stacey Abrams, the, the um, Kamala Harris, the, uh, the Hillary Clintons of the world, they've all actually helped to break down and chisel away at this idea that a woman cannot serve in the highest position of this office. And so now there's a different opening. There's a particular opening. So what does that mean? What do we do in this moment? I've got three things I think that we have to do. Shirley Chisholm, thank you, y'all. Shirley Chisholm and others, that there has been a long line of women who have made this possible. And this is part of their victory too. And we're excited, not just about Kamala, we're excited about them as well, as well as some other tickets that to get some more women in the Senate, we got some work to do. Um, but I think that it's important for us to recognize there are three opportunities I see now that we have to focus on. That's money, momentum, and message. And so, and they all have this, is like the trifecta, right? What it is that we need right now. I will tell you that I this kind of momentum, those of you who have been doing this work, you know it can be fleeting. The way that we have this 24 hour news cycle, things can change. A whole lot of things change from last week to this week, right? And so what we don't wanna do is when you get that kind of moment and that kind of energy, like you've gotta capture it. Even on my phone, I had to cut my phone off. I had to cut my messages off since Sunday. I literally have not had a single minute that my phone is not going off from a text. My phone is not going off with my messages. People asking me, I have two examples. Well, I'll just, for the sake of time, um, example that I'll raise that I have a friend who is extremely deeply religious, who, ne who doesn't necessarily um, engage in, 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 in politics. She doesn't really believe in politics. She believes politics is corrupt. She votes, but that's like, she was like, I'm just going to vote. That's it. She called me Sunday night about 1.30 in the morning after getting off a phone call where we had 
44,000 black women on a call and said, what I need to do. I was like, wait a minute, what do you mean? Like volunteer? She's like, oh, I'm all in. I'm all in. My niece who said that she was, that called Joe, um, uh, genocide Joe, who she and I have been engaged in argument for the last few months, called me and said, auntie, I want to work. I want to volunteer. What can I do? My 90 year old aunt, who also saw, said that she wasn't excited about this piece and because of Alabama, because of law in Alabama that doesn't let people help folks do, um, in, um, uh, uh, help help people, help elderly folks vote in the absentee ballot. She had just decided she was going to leave it alone. She was like, y'all got it. I'm 90 years old. I Y'all got it. But even she said, okay, like she saw that this was a game changer. My point is we've got the energy, the momentum, and the hope on our side. It is a moment for us to take advantage of that. And when we're talking about money, movement, and message, they're all they're all in this trifecta. So in this moment, what does that mean about the money? What that means is to keep this momentum going, we need money early. Like our organization, we have a 14 million dollar gap because part of what we want to make sure that we're doing is in the mobilization but also in the message strategy we already know what the play playbook is we already know that trump is going to come after kamala with three things he's going to come after um questioning her qualifications her intellect we know that she, he's going to come after where they're going to try to over sexualize her and frame her a particular kind of way and three we also know that they're going to try to frame her past and her past experience as a prosecutor in a certain kind of way we can get in front of that because we know the message that the message that will resonate and will work. And so I think it's really important what we it's really important for us to get in front of this and know what moment we have. And because of that, y'all, we've got to move money. I know we always say we got to move money, but we got to move money for real. Like we can't wait until the DNC convention. We have to get out early and often. We know with the news cycle and what is happening, that is really important. And it's really important around message because it's important for us to know that we have to have certain messengers that we're empowering them to actually have that message. So as they try to pick our communities off, that we can get in front of that. I've gotten all kinds of messages from people who are in this moment of change. And I've seen opportunities like this that people have missed the opportunity. This is really y'all about power and possibilities. And so we've got to see radically reimagine that literally having her on a ticket, what it does is it opens up the possibilities of half of this nation to see themselves, to see themselves in a different kind of way, to see the possibilities of what can exist. This is, will not be a traditional election. I don't know we'll ever have a traditional election ever again. What I do know is that right now the momentum is on our side. If we do the work, as my sister um, Jennifer says, it is a way to win. Let's take advantage of it, get focused on it, and recognize that people are always ahead of political institutions. What the political parties say and even what the polls say, they've been wrong because people are at a different place. People want to see something different. They're hungry for it. They're ready for it. Let's organize them. Let's get it. Let's win. Let's make history together. Yes. Okay. Black we voters matter. Black Voters Matter supports hundreds of local Black organizations all over the country, in the Midwest, as well as the and South. And I should have said our states. We're in the South, in the Midwest. Uh, we have a, a, a 14 deep state, but 20 st state strategy. We are working in Pennsylvania and Ohio and, and Michigan and Wisconsin, and we're working in the South. We're going to take Georgia and North Carolina. Don't believe the polls, y'all. We coming. We coming hard. I love it. And so now we're going to pivot. Thank you, Latasha. Go team. We're going to pivot to Alex Gomez from Lucha, and which is one of MVP's few local partners that has almost become a household name. Alex, can you describe what your work is like in Arizona this year and how does or doesn't this change anything and impl any implication for your constituency for Latina and immigrant voters? Uh, yes. Thank you so much, Billy, Latasha, you are always so energizing. So thank you so much. And dang, I have to go after you. Sheesh. sheesh. <laughs> um, but, you know, I feel like I'm coming in with the energy of a general. I'm hunkered down and we need to move and it is time to go. Um, we have now the momentum. We have the energy from community in a way that we have not had Um when we were at the doors just this Saturday, um, before the decision on Sunday, what we were hearing from our communities was, will we have a democracy after November? 
And so these are the types of conversations that we were experiencing at the door. And now what we have felt after is just this new uh, excitement, this new energy, and people that perhaps were not as dialed in are now more interested. But what that means is that Arizona has a lot of pressure. Arizona has pretty much everything in play, presidential, Kamala amongst the Latino community, amongst undecided and amongst unaffiliated voters actually polls higher. And so that is incredibly encouraging for us, but that means that we have to go out and outreach to our communities now. Um, and so the work ahead of us is, is a lot. Um, so we have the presidential, we have a Senate race potentially now Mark Kelly is being looked at as a, a vice president um, potential. So what we are thinking is we also might have a second Senate race um, along with our congressional races and flipping the legislature. And so we have a path to being able to deliver all of that, but that means that we actually need the resources now. There are currently a potential of 850,000 Latinos that can be uh, mobilized and galvanized to weigh in in this moment, particularly because many of our communities are talking about the kitchen table issues. They care about what's going to happen with our reproductive health, and we have a ballot measure that we can deliver on to ensure that our reproductive health is protected come November. Um, but we need to get that across the finish line as well. And what have we done so far? Arizona has already knocked on 450,000 doors. That means those are conversations that we've already had with voters, naming that uh, environment, housing, are top issues for them. Because in Arizona, what we have seen is that our housing is incredibly expensive and it is at a crisis point. Um, our communities are facing eviction. And so what we... Uh, want to sort of get across is that we have the potential to deliver. And Arizona is a path to 270. It is a path to the Senate. We can potentially flip the Arizona State Legislature. And one of the challenges is that, and I want to really thank MVP um, and a couple of our union brothers and sisters, MVP is a reason right now that we are still out on the field. We have our primary that ends on Tuesday and potentially we may have to stop operation because the funds have been so scarce. And so for a battleground state to not be able to continue its um, work out in the field is a devastating prospect as we are at the precipice of one of the most important and consequential elections um, in our lifetime. And what I will say is that you know, we have 104 days left until the general election, but in Arizona, we have 79 days until ballots drop. And that means October. So for us, we are feeling the heels of this election right uh, next to us at our doorstep. And so we need the resources to move now. Um, what we are also seeing is that for, you know, we have a $3 million gap uh, but we have been able to raise uh, 1.5 million of that. So we still, we $13 million gap, I'm so sorry. And we've been able to raise 3 million of that. And so we, um, we are looking to you all to be able to meet the moment because this is the election where, you know, as our endorsement committee came together on Sunday, and resoundingly voted for Kamala Harris uh, unanimously um, and named that this election is so much bigger than the candidates. This election is about saving our democracy. But what we know is true is that Kamala Harris will effectively prosecute the case against a wannabe dictator who vilifies immigrants and communities of color for his political gain. And so we are optimistic that we will have someone like Kamala Harris uh, in office who is a descendant of immigrants, Black, South Asian woman, 
represents communities like ours. Um, but we also need, we need to move now because we cannot wait. We cannot leave this election to be held by an authoritarian authoritarian that will come for our communities. And we have seen what the blueprint is. We have seen what Project 2025 promises to deliver, mass deportation, the end of um, our uh, Department of Education, and so much more. And so, yeah, I am ready. We have been on the ground. We have knocked on 450,000 doors and we're gonna knock on a million as Lucha and we're gonna knock at 5 million uh, as a state. And so we need you all. And, and so your gap, thank you so much, Alex. And your gap right now is is 10 million or 13 million? 13 million. It's 13 million. And that needs to be PAC money. This is really important. Arizona has these disclosure laws. Usually people give C4 money, but because it's disclosed, all these donors that normally give to Arizona are not giving to Arizona. So we need people to give PAC money directly to Lucha's PAC. And if you can put that in the chat, it's so important to have individual donations to what's, what's your PAC is called Victory PAC? Victory PAC. Victory PAC. Yes. Okay. That's where and the I'll, money I'll go to Victory PAC. Okay. Thank I'm you, ready. Alex. And we're go team. We're going to go now to the Midwest to Doran Schranz, founder of Faith in Minnesota, architect of the Minnesota miracle of winning a trifecta and getting Governor Tim Walz to pass the most impressive package of state legislation in the country. Go watch Tim Walz's videos from yesterday. He's a sleeper pick for VP. Doran passed the torch at Faith in Minnesota. More generational change and built the Midwest training hub and win the Midwest new organization. Love them as a partner and um she's a visionary for the midwest y'all and um <laughs> doran how are you seeing this moment in midwestern battlegrounds and are white people gonna vote for kamala Harris? Oh, as a as a as a white person whisperer i will give you all the answers <laughs> so um I'm really happy to be here. It's a really extraordinary moment. I have just been like, like all of you, I have been up and down the roller coaster on social media, talking to people. I went from feeling like this was like a, you know, like a, like a grim March to November to like, uh, just like feeling like I can breathe again. Like there's hope and there is a plan and a path and we can totally do this. We can totally do this. So, um, a, where I want to start this is actually like building off a conversation about Tim Walls. So I, I people, he's been on, on cable news. He's in the Veep sweepstakes right now. Um, and uh, people are starting to realize like what an awesome guy Tim Walls is. And um, I'm really excited that the country is getting to know our governor from Minnesota. He's great. Um, I'm not sure that we want uh, the country to take him away from us, but we all have to make sacrifices to save democracy. So we'll see what happens. But the real question here, I think a lot of what Tim Walls is doing right now and like what's resonating with people um, says something actually about the set of steps that we've taken in Minnesota, in Wisconsin, in Michigan that have demonstrably beat back MAGA, won elections after elections, could a new, not only won an election like on defense, but then starting to be on offense. I think you see that in Michigan with Governor Whitmer. Um, we have absolutely found our way to doing that in Minnesota, where we are building multiracial governing coalitions that are not only about the person at the top, but go all the way down to the grassroots organizations working in concert cycle by cycle to understand clearly what is the narrative, what is the message, what is the organizing, and who are the messengers that get us on offense and deliver things back to our constituencies, which allow us to win the next election. And Tim Walls, if you've watched him on Morning Joe or watching him on cable, you're seeing a, a picture of what multiple years of organizing and aligned, coordinated, coherent political work that linked all those pieces starts to look like. And what it allows when you have bases of leaders, when you have unions and workers and people in barbershops and people in childcare centers and teachers actually acting like a choir and organizing each other around a vision with a clear set of tools about how it is we talk and persuade each other 
away from the, and I'm speaking of white people for a second, away from the temptations and the conflicted nature of how do we feel about the changes that are going on and animate their better their best selves and invite them into team multiracial democracy, but also be having the kinds of conversations we need to be having with black and brown and immigrant and Muslim people about what's at stake and like why we should have any reason to hope at all. So by linking those things together, we have been able to show concrete progress. And right now we are in a moment, um, I wanna uh, link back to what Jen was talking about, about Amplify, about the narrative messaging, to have the president of the United States, who is a brilliant woman of color, who is going, who is creating energy from top to bottom. I have the same experience of having conversations with base, with our own constituency, with organizers across, you know, like in the Ohio Students Association, it is alive, it is crackling, like people are consolidating. But the opportunity we have right now is to actually link a bully pulpit of a presidential campaign to lay out these contrasting futures and center the agency of voters to build the future that they want. But without having the organizing groups like, who are running the largest voter contact programs in the country right now, in Michigan, in Wisconsin, but I wanna go bigger, like in Arizona, Without those organizations that have the connections to the communities, it's not even just about the conversations they have at the doors. It's about who is talking to who. So we want the local mom who runs the PTA to be able to talk to the people that she knows relationally, as well as volunteer for a door knocking shift. We have to build that kind of energy. And we right now could start to construct the infrastructure not only so we, we know what we're saying on the doors, but also that we are equipping and unleashing thousands and thousands of ordinary people who are trusted messengers with the right kind of message that we know works to defeat MAGA and unleash that in our states. So the question about what it is that we need to resource right now, it is about exactly what Alex said, like fill her gap. <laughs> then we need to figure out how we're actually building the kinds of things that we need to build that would connect um, the uh, uh, Harris campaign, the work that Jen and Way to Win are doing with Amplify and not Shankar Osario, the work that's happening with the We Choose Us campaign, that's a democracy defense nationwide campaign partnering with these same statewide groups to do boot camps, train grassroots leaders, get people unleashed, do local social media campaigns that resonate with what Kamala Harris is saying, make sure that the digital ads are actually also something I'm hearing about at the grocery store. That kind of echo chamber is what we need right now. I think we know what to do and we just have to capture the moment to do it. So I just wanna underscore that what MVP is doing to resource the infrastructure on the ground in places like Faith in Minnesota or We the People or Detroit Action or Block or Grow that's doing this amazing uh, rural organizing in Western Wisconsin and countless other groups. And then we have to uh, lead and consolidate ourselves to make sure that we're building the narrative all the way down and we have a, we have a choir in every part of this country. So I'll stop there. Yes. Go team. Midwest. Woo! Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Okay. This is we're actually ahead of time. So we might even have time for a question. Next up is Maurice. Bring us home. Maurice also needs no introduction. I'll just say I don't know of a more unifying, respected, or critical leader in bringing together the entire spectrum of the left and the Democratic Party than Maurice and the Working Families Party. I know last week we talked and you had this whole plan around Biden. <laughs> and so how are you pivoting and responding in this moment? And so many groups are like just having to completely pivot their, their strategy right now. Uh, we're dying to hear your your vision and, and, and the showing up this moment. Thank you, Billy. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Thank you, family. And if folks in the chat, I just want folks to um, just acknowledge the brilliance and the passion and the sweat equity and the heart space and the genius and the strategic sort of weaving of folks like Billy, uh, folks like Latifa, folks like my sister Latasha, folks like Doran, folks like Alex, 
folks like Jen and use their names, right? Use their names, evoke their names. So uh, these are people that I've struggled with over years. These are, are my comrades. These are people that I love deeply, that I respect for so many reasons because of who they are as human beings, their uncommon commitment to our people and their willingness to stand in the gap for working people. So please uplift them. Please uplift them. We absolutely need to raise money, but we need to raise our spirits. And for those of you that, that don't know me, I'm a longtime organizer that now heads a political party that believes in the radical idea that working people, not the wealthy or corporations, should govern this country. And I get up every day to fight to make that radical vision a common sense reality. And now onto the question of the moment, the question that you posed, Billy. These are these are exciting times. I could feel it on a cellular level. You know, people talk about momentum. You know it when you feel it. If you just take a beat for a second, if you feel that, that vibration, that's the political momentum that pundits often talk about. We're in it and it's moving in our direction. We've seen record digital fundraising for Harris, more than 80 million in the first day. If you need permission to be excited, you officially have it. You have permission to be excited. We don't often get opportunities to shift political momentum in our favor. Um, you know, Latasha said it so perfectly, but over the last few months, Republicans had some momentum, especially over the last month. We were in a strange sort of perilous place that made everyone I talked to feel a sense of dread, a sense of doom. It was a little cloudy. Now we're out of that place. We have new marching orders for a new political era at, at, at the perfect time when we need the momentum towards the end stretch over the last 100 days. Now, we don't need more pundits. We don't need more predictors. We don't need more people getting on and off the polar coasters. We don't need more hang ringing. We need to be strategic actors. That includes us practitioners and donors in this conversation. Now that we are in a different moment, we need to be focused and show up as a united front. WFP has been building a part of that united front. And many of you have built that with us. You're why we are here. In terms of our plans of the structure, nothing structural has changed, Billy, just to answer your question. The momentum has shifted, but nothing structural has changed. What has changed is the momentum. That puts us in a unique and fortuitous position. Doran spoke about the fact that, that her assessment is that we have everything that we need. That is my assessment. We have the vehicles, we have the, 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 the tested tactics, we have the strategic brilliance, we have the organizations that are uniquely positioned to have deep and trusted relations, relation, uh, conversations with the people that we need to have trusted conversations with. Our plans are validated and tested. What is required of us between now and election day is execution, execution. And execution requires at least three things. This is my assessment. Number one, a coordinated campaign that inspires hope. Check, we now have that, welcome. Number two, a campaign's preferred independent expenditure vehicle. And that will ramp up after Labor Day with the, on TV and digital. That preferred IE vehicle is going to be, already has a lot in its coffers and is going to be unleashing a torrent of TV and digital post Labor Day. Check. And number three, an independent grassroots infrastructure that is functioning at its highest level. So if the IE and coordinated campaign are successful, that, that is coordinated, that is, uh, Number one and number two, if those two things are successful, they will bring the margin of victory incredibly close. And I have all expectation that Kamala Harris's campaign, the coordinated campaign and the IE will run the way that they need to run. The remaining gap, that remaining gap, and we know, we've known this for years. We saw this in 2020. These elections have consistently been close. So that remaining gap is the margin of our organizing. Filling it is the role of independent grassroots infrastructure like WFP and the broad ecosystem that Movement Voter Project supports. 
groups we work with every single day on the ground in battleground states. Billions, with a B, will go into the first and second categories, the first and second machines, as they should. The campaign and the independent expenditure vehicles must be fully resourced. Gail and Oprah and Sandra will make sure Harris has a billion dollars. Trust me. Two of those categories are going to be fully funded, as they should be. Your job, and this is why you're on this call, as funders who are showing up to a movement voter project briefing, is funding the last third, the grassroots plan to close the margin of, of organizing, the grassroots plan to victory. Without you, this third part will be left behind. And the third part is essential. The third part isn't window dressing. The third part isn't a cherry on top. The third part is an essential third. And you should, if you're a praying person or, or if you're a religious person, thank that deity. If you are a philosophical person, uh, wonder why you are here in this moment and this time on this call. And I would say it's you're being called into filling that essential gap. Thank God for times that are morally clear because it allows all of us to decide where we want to be on history and which side of history we want to be on. This is your calling to be on the right side of history, to be with the right people situated to align and make a historic intervention on that third piece. The margin of organizing will be closed by a united front. WFP has been preparing for and is primed and ready for this moment. We are positioned to hold the coalition together from uncommitted voters to labor to centrist Democrats who share a goal of defeating MAGA. This election is going to require a united front electoral organizing posture that requires everyone to the front to be disciplined. So after this moment of exuberance, I wanna be clear, we have to be prepared. There will be a moment of backlash, racist and misogynist backlash. A united front means we must anticipate and respond to it. Our leaders and our messengers are uniquely positioned to be able to preempt that backlash. People like Alex, people like Latasha, people like Doran, in their communities. A united front means those of us who support a ceasefire will be emboldened if Harris chooses, for example, not to attend that Netanyahu speech in front of Congress tomorrow, or today, actually. And it might mean we are disappointed when they have a closed door bilateral meeting tomorrow, right? But the reality is, that Harris is going to need to bring people into this coalition that don't always agree with us. And so we need to be sophisticated and we need to be clear-eyed about building the biggest tent that includes a very, very strong progressive faction that is super focused on all of our issues from immigration to a, a foreign policy that aligns to our values, through Medicaid for all, through a truly democratic economy. We could do both. It is not an either or. We could hold the contradictions and nuances. That is what makes us strategic thinkers. That is what makes us top level strategists. It's that nuance. This is a moment of disruption. Moments of disruption provide opportunities, but they provide opportunities for those that are the most organized. I didn't say the most right. I didn't say the most righteous. I said the most organized. We need to be a steady hand, an organized hand. All of us need to be part of the same vehicle. For many of you and for many of the labor and community folks that we work with every single day, WFP is a vehicle. For many of you, Movement Voter Project is a vehicle. We need to build a field coalition and a funder coalition. This is your time. Prior to this weekend, you might have wondered if your investments this cycle mattered or if they would be effective Will my investments actually translate? Would they be efficacious? Is this, a, is this a losing battle? And that may have been a legitimate question, honestly. I peered into the abyss more times than I'd like to admit. But on Sunday, we received a gift when Biden endorsed Harris, passing the torch. And I don't normally do this with any of y'all, but I am now giving you all instructions Right. So Alex said it best. She feels like she's a she is a general. We have field generals. Your job is to listen to them and be lieutenants in this united front against fascism, against MAGA. 
I am giving you instructions as a field general. Now is the moment to make a strategic investment in independent progressive infrastructure. Resources needed to get into the field in places like Milwaukee and Philadelphia yesterday. Billions will be raised and spent between now and November. And there is a unique piece of that hole that you all could fill today that few others can fill. Fund the ecosystem and fund it in a way where you know we're going to win. Close that margin of organizing. Fund us like we're going to win. We need you to join us in making a strategic invent, uh, intervention right now. And, and I'm, making, I'm making a personal news. Tomorrow is my birthday. If that wasn't convincing, make me <laughs> an early birthday present. Yeah. And right, there's somebody here. I don't know who you are. I know there's maybe a thousand of us. I don't know who you are, but I'm talking directly to you. You right now are considering whether or not you should write the largest political donation in your life. I am giving you permission to do that today, to do that before this call ends. You know who I'm talking to. If I'm speaking to your spirit, if you feel that tension as organizers, when we feel that tension, when it feels, when you feel that that sense that I might be doing something so audacious, I might, I might regret it tomorrow, that's the good stuff. That's when you know you're in the fight. Write a check that makes you, makes you a little scared. That's the check that we need in order to build on this momentum. We need you to join us in making a strategic intervention today. Write a check that reflects this historic moment. For us to be successful in meeting our progressive governance goals, we need to show that we are a faction. We're not foot soldiers. For those of you that are concerned about immigration, for, for those of you that are concerned about Gaza, for those of you that are concerned about public safety, we are not foot soldiers in the Democratic Party's um, uh, army. We're not just getting along and folding in. We are a strategic faction in a united front for democracy. And VP Harris happens to lead that united front. We're clear-eyed. We need you today to bring us home. Back to you, Billy. Yes. Yes, yes. And I, I know everyone can't come off camera, but I know we're all cheering right now. Can you tell us what the gap is um, or, or what what the, the bold goals are that, that Working Families has? And I know you have a hard stop and want to, um, if Doran, Alex, Latasha, um, or uh, Jen are available, want to make closing comments. We're going for another half hour after this, but just want to... Uh, hear what your gaps are and then want to invite others to give closing comments as well and latifa so, oh d maurice can uh can you give us a sense of the scale of money we're talking about here oh maurice i hope we didn't lose you um okay maurice jump back in at any point and we might have lost maurice um, so wow, 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 wow. Um, okay, who wants to go next? What, what, why, why don't we go in the, the same order? Um, I'm assuming Latifah's gone. So, Jen, do you want to go? Can we spotlight Jen for closing thoughts? Closing thoughts. Oh my gosh. Oh, wait, hold on. We have Maurice. Wait. Oh, we have Maurice oh. back. Okay, great. Well, how much money are you trying to raise? We believe that there's a global gap of $75 million in uh, the field and all the partners we work with, WP proper, and field tactics that are non-branded that could go to a number of people that are tested and proven that we could run the map with today. We should have been running the map with it yesterday. We could close that gap today with the firepower and the resources just on this call. Imagine if we did that. Match the energy of the 44,000 Black women that got together in a few hours and raised more than a million dollars, or the 20,000 Black men that came together and raised more than a million dollars. Match that energy now on this call, and let's close all of these gaps. You heard Alex's gap. You heard, you heard about our gap. We could close all of that today just off of the resources on this call. Let's get it done. We got the plan. We got the people. We got the genius. Let's align it. Now we need the resources. Let's go. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Maurice. Jen? Yes. Yeah, so 
I really appreciated what Maury said about the final third. I think it's important to always remember that we are in the context, as Kamala likes to remind us, <laughs> we exist in the context and we exist in the context of a large campaign that's raising historic amounts of money and a large IE that's raising historic amounts of money. Way to Win has actually been partnered up with Future Forward to actually position uh, grassroots groups and all the narrative work that we're doing to be to, to be part of it. And so that's important. And I, and it's high leverage. So like what we can build now, we can leverage by connecting up with that IE infrastructure. So I would say um, for us at Way to Win, we would like to raise $10 million right now to supercharge all this infrastructure that we have already built that can also help us leverage that messaging into the entire IE side of the campaign and connect our whole movement up with it. So that's my um, thought, closing thought and ask. <laughs> yes, let's get it done. And I also just want to uh, double click on... Um, Jen mentioned BFD, Building for Democracy, which is Way to Win, Democracy Alliance, Committee on States and MVP, and others collaborating to fund the field together in the states. So it's a really exciting, if you're if you're a sophisticated donor advisor who's looking, you know, in like which states, what are the gaps? This is where we all get together and say, this is how we see the gaps in Nevada, in Arizona, in Michigan. And uh, so BFD, uh, shouting that out. Um, Latasha, do you want to go next? I can go. I am here. I, um, um, Mo got me all excited and fired up. I was like, that's right. That's right. We can do this, y'all. And so for us, our gap, our C4 gap um, is 8 to 10. We, on a con very conservative side, because of some of our states, um, we said 8, but really 10 would take us to be able to do our full program. Um, we, you know, I think this moment, and, and I don't, I think we have to move beyond the idea of what it's going to take to win with this threat of democracy, this threat that has come forth. Y'all, we got to win with, we literally got to push and win convincingly that will shut down any efforts, future efforts. We've already, because of women, I just want y'all to think about it. If you watch the RNC, you did not hear a single one of them really actually talk about or say the word abortion, right? We did that. We did, the, us collectively, we did that. We changed the whole narrative of what was acceptable and not because we beat them. And so the bottom line is if we beat them convincingly, it is going to shift. It's not go, like they're going to stop. But it's not going to be normalized to continue to attack democracy and voter suppression. And so we've got to send a message. We got to use this election cycle, not just to win, but we got to beat them bad, y'all. We got to beat them in these states so that we can actually help hold back some of the voter suppression that they will know don't ever come at women again. Because what you don't want is you do not want a scorned woman to come after you. That's not what you want. And we've got to send that message um, loud and clear around to actually not just for now this election, but that the can actually give us some relief in terms of our future going forward in politics. They got to change the narrative. Yes. And Latasha, so you have a relationship with President Biden, with Vice President Harris, and you work together to try to pass voting rights. Can you talk about conversations with with um, with, with with them and, and what the vision is for 2025? And Yes. So we've actually been in conversation with them um, over the last four years, we actually had to protest our president a couple of times, uh, <laughs> but it has turned out to be a very, uh, a, a very good relationship, working relationship. Um, and Kamala has been the lead on just a few months ago, I think three months ago, we did a, um, a with, with voting rights activists came to Atlanta um, and we did a forum with her that she led. Uh, around voting rights and their commitment to voting rights. I spoke with the president directly about a month ago um, and there was a, and Kamala has been the lead on this. So there is in their first hundred days, there's a lot of momentum to actually get the John Lewis Voter Advancement Act and the Freedom to Vote Act. Yeah, oh, those are game changers. Those are game changers. That's why we've seen so much resistance around voter suppression and this trend of voter suppression. And so I cannot I, I cannot stress enough how important it is that, that we win convincingly, 
um, in this election cycle. And I and Kamala, let me say this. Kam you don't have to convince her about voting rights. You don't have to protest her about voting rights. She is there. She has made herself. She actually has made herself available and wants to champion. She actually wants voting rights to be a part of her legacy, like her legacy of leadership. So we've got this opportunity to really be able to strengthen democracy. We've got to see this as a broader way than just being in Trump, because that's not good enough. Just beating Trump is just not good enough. We literally have to beat Trump. We've got to put somebody in office, give them the wind under their wings so that they can govern. And so if we're able to get a convincingly, like literally the um, uh, high numbers in Michigan and Pennsylvania and Arizona, particularly in those swing states, it is going to change the entire political landscape. It's going to change how Congress actually responds to the president. It's going to change what policy priorities. So we've got to really see this, not just a short-term win. We need the short-term win in November and fifth. Yes, we do, right? But we also need the long-term win in January after the inauguration so we can get to work. So we need the kind of money to make a convincing, strong message and win. Don't come for us because we will meet you in return. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I, I'm going to pass it to Alex, but I want to say three things first. First, I see people in the chat donating Heather, Lisa, I'm, I'm missing, I'm sure so many people. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's let's encourage each other, donating to, to our partners, donating through MVP, however you want to do it. We're here to help. Um, I, also I got to say hey to Susan real quick. Hey, Susan, I love you. There are some donors on this call that have literally in the middle of the gap, you have believed, you have been believers with us. Y'all, we've got, our issue is we've got to believe the people are further ahead than political pundits are or political parties. It is a moment of how do we take this gift of momentum and really drill down and get it done. And so I just want to thank, I think I saw Susan Pritzer. There's just so many of y'all that have been just consistent and consistent. I know, I know that you have like just, you have, you've got a hole in your pockets from going in there so much but we thank you and it is because of you it is literally because of you and your work and your leadership that we're building this new this new movement this movement that is made up of donors and people it's those of us that care about america that we desire and we deserve a greater america with more possibilities so thank you i just want to come on and just say thank you for what you already done like us we tired but we're gonna get some more but we ain't really tired we're tired maybe a little bit but <laughs> we're going to push through this next space to get the work done. And I know you are tired as well, but there's a song um, that I usually sing. I'm not going to sing because I'm not going to take up time right now. Um, call, I'm, I'm, and I'm no ways tired. I've come too far from where I've started from, that we have come too far from where we started from. Y'all, we are breaking barriers. We are breaking the racial barrier. We're breaking the gender barrier. We are sending a message that we are going to have an America that we desire and we deserve. And that we're going to have the kind of policy breakthroughs that we need that's going to get us, that we're going to be, we're not going to be afraid to say, Poor people. We're not going to be afraid to say the LGBT community. We're not going to be afraid to say that a woman can win. Do we not see the possibilities in this moment? It is so much bigger than Kamala and Biden. I can't even, I just kind of want to scream it to the world. This is really the moment, y'all, that it is going to take strategy. It's going to take strength, but it's going to take spirit. We've got to have a spirit of understanding that we're going to transform this nation, that we're not going to be stuck in a paradigm that always boxes us based on race or class or gender or sexuality. We're going to demand something different. We're going to lead the way to have something different. And we're going to change this damn country. That's what we're going to do. Yes, yes. And, you know, underneath all of the the electoral wins is the community we're building. I love that you, the relationship that you and Susan have built, like that's what we're building, like beloved community among all of us who are going to transform this country. Winning the elections is just the tip of the iceberg, you know, of what we're building. So yes, um, and passing it to Alex. It is ours to win. And um I know that I am feeling incredibly inspired by what I'm seeing on the ground. Um, just this past Friday, we had our communities come in and do a fiesta y bota. And we had to have an overflow room. From that overflow room, we took everyone that can fit in a party bus to drop off their ballots um, at a polling location. 
and just the energy and seeing families be able to vote together despite everything that we had previously been experiencing you can just feel how excited and motivated and eager our communities are to be able to cast their ballot because what our communities are saying is ya basta ya basta with the attacks stop coming for us because we are going to come for you at the polls on november on election day and we are not stopping because there is so much more work to do after election day, but we have to win. And so Arizona is a path to 270, Arizona is a path to the Senate, and Arizona also is gonna deliver um, three Congress people um, in this election, and we're gonna flip the legislature. So we're really proud of how we have accelerated in the state and how that's gonna add up to a resounding victory nationally. Um, and all of that was be was done by um, communities of color that were previously underestimated, left out of the political process. And so I'm just really proud to see our gente delivering and casting their ballots in the primary. So we're gonna also see a historic participation in primaries from our people. And that means that we're gonna continue to see historic victories like we did in 2020 um, this November. So. I'm just really proud to be a witness in this moment, in this unprecedented moment that people power continues to reign true. And I'll pass it to Doran. Is that okay, Billy? Can she pass it to me or did you? Okay. <laughs> okay, so the gap for the grassroots infrastructure in the country is a sign of how much faith we actually have in people to win this. So the political industry, God love them, oftentimes doesn't have a lot of faith in people. So it's like our ads are going to win it. The data bros are going to win it. An app is going to win it. But it's actually the work that we're doing on the ground that unleashes people's leadership to own this for themselves that will win it. And what MVP is about and the whole conversation we're having on this call is like, do we have faith? Do we believe that our people, people can lead us to this win? And 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 again, like Latasha said, the election is not like the end point. It's voting rights and paid family leave and universal school meals and like putting money back in people's pockets. And it's also people feeling again, like this country is theirs and that they get to control its future. We get to decide its future. We make the future. So I think we have to, prov it's this conversation isn't just about what's our gap and where's the money. It's also a provocation about like, what is our theory of winning and who are we putting at the center? And that is the opportunity that we have right now on this call to put people at the center and our belief in people, that people can win it. And that's what's going to save democracy. <laughs> so, that's my final words. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, my God. This is so, like, incredibly moving. And so we're going to pivot right from there to all of you, all of the 688 people who are still on this call after an hour we're all, we got to do this together. We got to hold hands. And I'm going to bring Regina on the call who manages our donor organizing uh, program at MVP. Because at MVP, we believe that we're all organizers. We're all organizers in our own way. And we're all, we all got to hold hands together and organize everyone we know toward this goal, toward this vision that, that we we talked about on this call today. So um, so Regina and others on our donor organizing team, and I wanna super lift up our volunteer donor organizers and we have incredible volunteers. So much of MVP's success is our volunteer leaders who you know, love this work as much or more than anyone else in the planet does. Um, so Regina, I'm going to pass it to you and uh, to open it up to volunteers. And what we most want is, is everyone to be a part of this together. That is our dream. Go ahead, Regina. 
That is our dream. And we're living it here with all of you today. Thank you so much for being here. I'm Regina Clemente, long-term MVP team member and senior advisor, um, who uh, can definitely tell you we take organizing very, very, very seriously here if you haven't already caught on to that. Um, and that's why in addition to our donor advising, MVP has a team of staff and amazing volunteers throughout the country focused on supporting donors, community organizing, other folks in your networks, because you are all the best messengers to tell these folks, donors and potential volunteers about specific ways to get more involved. And so together so far this year with our donor organizing volunteers and hubs throughout the country, we've already raised over $5 million through over a hundred house parties. And we've raised another 2 million on top of that through volunteer led efforts. Um, and so we have lots of ways for folks to get involved beyond donating. Um, just for a little quick overview, for one, you can host your own house party or join with other friends to host your own house party. That can be on Zoom or in person. So you think about what you can do. How can you go through your phone list, your email list, and your contacts that maybe you haven't even engaged with people in a long time, but this is a great way to re-engage with them and get them involved more deeply in what's going on now. Um, you can also just invite people to join an MVP national party where we're doing more of the party lifting and you can get your invite list to join that and we'll have a presentation um, uh, what's going on with MVP, what's going on with groups on the ground, um, and your folks can learn all about that. Um, you can also play behind the scenes roles in these house parties because they don't just magically happen. We need lots of folks doing different roles like being party coordinators, helping us manage Zoom. Um, if you like being in front of the camera, you can be a party presenter. We have beautiful decks and slides that we train you up on. Um, and there's also other ways you can get involved. We have many donors. Thank you so much for, for being some of those. Um, and some haven't engaged recently. And so we're calling to thank our former donors every week um, and see if they are interested in engaging more right now between now and November. Um, and then we also have email fundraising campaigns where we can set you up to do an online fundraising campaign with your network. So there's lots of ways you can volunteer um, beyond donating. And um, we actually have a crew of many of our uh, rock star volunteers on the call with us right now. Um, we'll see if we can spotlight uh, any of them. Um, but MVP volunteer donor organizers, uh, jump on in and tell folks a little bit more about what you've been doing on the ground in your state or lo local place. Do we have a Jan or a Janet or a Dana? I know I saw Vaughn Meyer and from New York um, on, if you want to share about what's going on in New York or Jody in Atlanta. Give us a second to unmute. Can you hear me all right? Uh, yes. We'll yeah, um, thank you so much. We yes, it's it's been a wonderful opportunity for me to be um, working with MVP here in in New York. Uh, I was pulled into MVP through a house party. I held a house party earlier this year for my family and contacts, and since then, I've had multiple opportunities to either support other people and having their own house parties or speaking about MVP, including a spoke last night. Um, and it's really been a really wonderful opportunity to just get involved to to. Uh, help in a way that is is flexible with with my schedule and the other things that I have going on, um, and and just to support in a way that makes me feel like I'm I'm helping, I'm a part of this movement, I'm I'm doing what I can, and supporting other people and reaching out to their contacts and to their networks so we can continue to grow the movement and bring in more and more people. So I've really I've gotten so much out of it. Um, I was so inspired earlier today when we we're talking about the the. Um, the only thing we ever did right, the only thing I ever did right was the moment I got into the fight and every single house party, every single email, every single question, or just yeah, trying yeah. to make sure yeah. it's all successful is it makes me feel like I'm, I'm in this fight. And especially after today, I'm so excited to be in this fight. So I totally suggest that everyone get involved uh, with the way that they can and help with house parties, whether that is helping to do the organizing or presenting, or if it's being a Zoom coordinator, every little bit is, is helpful and will power us to victory in November. And Vaughn is organizing in New York, our new New York hub send your New York people. We're trying to build like a Boston level organizing thing in New York. <laughs> I'll just say that um, here in the Eastern Mass world of volunteers, 
we've actually been able to raise millions of dollars. And I have so much more respect for fundraising than I ever did before, because it's an opportunity that we provide people to feel better because they're participating in the kind of work that we've heard about on this call, which has been just so overwhelmingly wonderful that I'm really more geared up to go than ever. And that's after or uh, volunteering with MVP for like six years. Um, it's so important right now. And, you know, we don't always get a chance to be part of a movement. Um, and I think with MVP and with what's going on, we have that chance right now. Um, I know I want to be part of it. And I bet everybody that's listening does too. So you should call us and talk to us about volunteering. It's really great. Thanks so much, Dan. So as another Boston person, along with Jan, we work closely together. I'll just add that we love to help other people get involved. That's what we're, that's what we're all about, whether it's helping you figure out how to donate or helping you figure out how to be involved in helping us organize activities. There's a large variety of things you can do, ranging from sending thank you notes to hosting a house party or helping other people host house parties. So I put the links in the chat. You can look on the MBB website and find links to sign up. You know, if you sign up, it'll get to us. You'll hear from one of us and we'll help you get involved. And as Jen said, it, it's the best thing I do. Well, so I'm taking care of my grandchildren. It's the best thing I do in my life. <laughs> Thanks, Dana. Bye. And yeah, as you see, you're not just going to get an email with a toolkit and a good luck at MVP. You are going to get a whole team of amazing volunteers who have been doing this for years, backing you and supporting you up. You'll, you'll get to join our community. And that's really what it's all about. I can follow on that from a different geography here in the South in Atlanta. Um, thanks to the folks in Boston for launching us, I guess, as a new hub. Um, so yeah, hi, Janet. Shout out to Janet. I see you. Um, but yeah, I mean, she brought the energy down here to Atlanta. I attended a house party when I was feeling pretty blah in April. Um, I co-hosted one maybe two weeks ago when things felt even more blah. Um, but you know, today it's a it's a new day. And even two weeks ago in that funky in-between time, everybody I invited thanked me for inviting them. They weren't like, here she comes to ask for money because I asked for money for a lot of things. They really thanked me. People want to be involved. And so you're giving people a gift. That's what they always say when you ask people about fundraising. But especially at this moment, I really believe you're giving people a gift by asking them to be a part of this. And I, the other thing I'll just say really quickly why this spoke to me is that in 2020, I did everything. I knocked doors, I, I contested contested ballots. I did, I did everything, but I really believe in the message of relational fundraising and I was not who they needed to see at the door. Um, and so I really wanna fund people to send the trusted messengers out and so that message can be heard. So that's from the South. That's can great. I just say, Jody, this is like, this makes me so happy. It's like, this is our dream. It's like a friend calls a friend in another city and was it's like, hey, let's do this together. And look at you, you're organizing in Atlanta. This is we've been dreaming of this. And we need this to happen all over the country. Like call your old friends, your college roommates, and say, like, hey, I was just on this call. Let's do this together. That's what's gonna, that's what's gonna make this magic, you know? So like. Thank you so much. Like, like th this is you are who we've been dreaming of, you know. And there are more yous yeah. on this call, and and more yous who, you know, your old college roommate, your old best friend who moved away. This is a way to reconnect with your friends and do fun things together. To save the country. So more, more of that. <laughs> Any other volunteers on? Want to jump on in? I can just say that we have phenomenal volunteer hubs in Washington State and the Bay Area in California for you West Coasters. Um, and they are doing such a great job of organizing. They really immediately more, need more folks to help them do things like party coordinating. So behind the scenes stuff, emails, logistics, et cetera, that I think a lot of us on this call are probably good at. Um, and so in addition to holding your, hosting your own parties, we need folks supporting other parties and are just so excited about this growing team. Um, we're aiming to raise at least $5 million more dollars uh, by end of October through house parties. Um, and we appreciate every, every uh, piece of contribution folks can get. I can jump in here. Yeah. 
Yeah, here hey, in Larry? Larry Hot in Western Mass, we have an active hub of 10 people. We've been active for five years, and uh, we've raised well over a million dollars just in our little town. Uh, or our area, I should say. And we have so many house parties coming up. And uh, what we've been doing is contacting former hosts, getting them all together. We have a house party tonight. We have a house party tomorrow night. And August 4th, we're doing a Stop the MAGA Takeover house party with 35 co-hosts. We've got a $25,000 match. We've already raised $25,000 to match that. So if we can do it here in Western Massachusetts, you can certainly do it. And we just called everybody we knew and they all jumped on board, everybody. And this, we were doing this before Biden stepped down and Harris came on. And then when Harris came on, boy, things just went wild. Uh, we're, we are overwhelmed with the work, but we know what we're doing. Uh, Regina, you're going to be at that August 4th event. I will. <laughs> to stop the MAGA takeover. Thank you for that. And I just want to say that anybody could start a hub and we have a mechanism to help people with those hubs. Uh, we have five now, at least, or six, seven, I don't know. It's growing every day. Um, but we've been having a good time. It's a, We have our own community, and we love it. And uh, it's one way to stop the depression and feel excited. Absolutely. And at that August 4th house party, another way folks can get involved, and they can give matches to house parties. And we have an increased match for that August 4th house party, um, which I believe is at least to 50K right now, matching up to 50K raised at that house party. So contact us if uh, you are interested in getting involved in that one. And then on August 14th, we're going to have a national house party where you can also invite all your folks to. Um, and so lots of ways to get involved. Right now, we're having about a house party a day. And by September, we need to double or triple that. So we are super excited to support all of you who can jump on in. Let me say one more thing. We got Congressman Jim McGovern coming to our house party August 4th. So I think it's a great thing to do. Just ask your state legislators, representatives, con Congress members. Uh, they're probably will show up and enhance your party. And I just got word that the match now for the August 4th is actually an 100K match. So uh, great for the team. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the gauntlet has been thrown down. All right, we're on. <laughs> yeah, Tracy Hewitt from Rhode Island. There is a there is a Rhode Island uh, team forming. And I see Arlene with your hand up. Um, yeah, I, I want to pick up on what Dana and uh, Larry said. Um, I, I'm, I'm really happy to change the world. That's really exciting to me, but MVP uh, keeps me from despair and sometimes gives me hope. And that changes everything for me. And I've been a volunteer since um, 2019 and my life is better. It was really better. Hey, and we're about to close the call. So I just want to say thank you. I see uh, Bettine from Los Angeles. We are trying to build a hub in Los Angeles. Um, so please, um, the way to follow up, um, if you want to get more involved, go to the volunteer link on the movement.vote website, sign up, tell us what you want to do. Tell us you want to get connected, where you want to get connected, what you want to get connected. And you are all part of this now. You, If you can hear my voice right now, we need you to be part of this movement with us. And uh, you are hereby deputized to go out and organize everyone you know to make this happen. We are here to support you. Let us know. And we are gonna all hold hands together and just wanna take a moment to think about and appreciate all of our incredible speakers today, Latifa, Jen, Latasha, Alex, Doran, Maurice, we're all connected to each other. We're all a big team and we're part of a much, much, much bigger team. And you all are part of it. And so that's what we're building. And together we are gonna hold hands, march forward with this new energy. We're gonna get the resources to the groups. We're gonna win trifectas and we're gonna, not just at the federal level, but at the state level, we're gonna transform this country. We're gonna make our dreams happen and we're gonna do it together and we're gonna celebrate. And so I don't know if we have any celebration music, but, you know, and Latasha, I see you're still on. Uh, anyone else who want to say any closing words? And, and we'll close. actually, Latasha, do you want to close us out? I will close us out. I will say that in this moment of um, where we've seen some pretty dark times, right, 
that there is a lot of light in the room and each of us carry that light. So I will close out with something that I think most of us know this. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Come on, y'all. In this moment, let's let our light shine. It's in the darkness that people see the stars and we are the stars. So thank you all. Let's go. We can do this. Let's win.